In the previous video, the lower quadcopter frame was constructed. This frame holds the motors, ESCs, receivers, and when the quadcopter is finished, the battery as well. In this video, I will explain how you can build the upper quadcopter frame, which sits on top of the lower frame and holds the majority of the electronic components. As already shown in the previous video, this electronic schematic contains everything necessary for the construction and soldering of the quadcopter. Almost all necessary wiring is integrated in the printed circuit board or PCB of the upper quadcopter frame. Each wire corresponds with one of the PCB traces and the colors of the traces on the figure are similar to the colors of the wires in the schematic. Now let's start with the construction of the upper quadcopter frame. In the first stage, you will need female and male headers, the slide switch and the power switch. When you want to make the soldering process as easy as possible, start by installing the male headers. These right angled headers usually come in a row of 40, so cut out 5 parts with 3 headers and 1 with 2. Place the first two male headers on the upper quadcopter frame. Hold the headers while turning the frame upside down and put the frame on the table. Now you can easily solder the pins of the headers from the back side. This true hole soldering is once again very straightforward. Now solder all other pins of the male headers to the quadcopter frame. The male headers are very useful features as they allow you to easily plug and unplug wires going to the receiver and ESCs. Be mindful of the direction in which they should be positioned. Next, you will install the female headers, which are used to hold the electronic components. Once again, the female headers come in rows of 40. Hold the headers firmly with pliers at the appropriate length. Next. Cut them while still holding the header with the pliers to get it right from the first time. You will need to repeat this process until you have all the necessary female headers. Let's solder the female headers for the TNC first. Hold both headers while turning the quadcopter frame upside down. Start soldering the pin on each of the ends of the header. After soldering these four pins, Turn around the quadcopter frame and inspect the headers. They should be straight. Continue with the headers for the MPU 6050 and the barometer. The headers are very convenient because they allow easy installation and removal of expensive components such as your TNC. Next, install the slide switch that will be used to switch the quadcopter on or off. You can install the switch in the direction that you prefer. Just solder the three pins to the foreseen holes. The power switch is one of the hardest components to install. Bend the three longest legs of the transistor forward. This allows you to slide the legs in the holes of the upper quadcopter frame. Bend the transistor such that its step touches the silver soldering area of the quadcopter. Turn around the frame and first solder the transistor pins before continuing. Next, solder the tap of the transistor to the silver soldering area. Because this is a very large soldering area, you can make soldering easier by turning the soldering temperature up to 350 degrees. This high temperature will make sure the tap, soldering area and solder does not immediately cool down, making it easier to make a successful connection. Now you are ready to start the installation of all other electronic components to the upper quadcopter frame. These include your TNC and sensors, as well as the diodes, resistors and LEDs. First, install the Zener diode and the normal diode. Notice that both diodes have a line on them, either black in case of the Zener and grey in case of the normal diode. You should make sure that this line corresponds with the line written on the upper quadcopter frame. Push the legs of the diodes through the foreseen holes. Turn around the quadcopter frame and start soldering the legs. Cut off the unnecessary parts of the legs after soldering. Proceed with installing the red and green LEDs. Remember that each LED has a long and a short leg. The long leg represents the positive side and the short leg represents the negative side. Make sure the long leg is inserted in the hole 
with a positive sign of the upper frame. You can push the LEDs fully through the holes, bend the legs and start soldering them to the frame from the opposite side. Once again, cut the unnecessary parts of the legs after soldering, such that they will not bother you later on. The red and green LEDs are now firmly soldered to the frame and will help you when testing all connections of the quadcopter. The final small electronic components that you will need to install are the resistors. Be very careful to install the correct resistor in each area, as installing the wrong resistor can damage the TNC or the LEDs. The correct resistance value is written each time on the quadcopter frame. The final parts consist of connecting the XT60 pigtail to the frame. This pigtail will make the connection with the battery. Cut and strip the wires of the pigtail and pay attention that you insert the red wire in the hole with VBAT written on it. The black wire should be inserted in the hole with ground written on it. Turn around the quadcopter frame once again, bend the wires and start soldering. Once again, the area that you will have to solder is pretty large, so you should turn up the soldering temperature to around 350 degrees to make it easier on yourself. Because you will often connect and disconnect the battery, you will use a lot of force on the pigtail. A nice and large soldering area therefore makes sure that you cannot accidentally rip off the pigtail when disconnecting the battery. Now let's install the sensors. For the MPU6050 gyroscope, it is very important that it is firmly attached to the frame. The two holes in the sensor allow to push a 20mm M3 fastening screw through it. First, slide the sensor full nut on the sensor fastening screw. Next, push the screw with the full nut through the sensor. Attach the screw to the sensor breadboard by installing another full nut. A third full nut should be placed halfway of the screw. Repeat the same procedure for the next breadboard hole. You should end with two screws containing each three full nuts. You are now ready to install the MPU6050 on the frame. Push the pins in the female headers and push the screws in the foreseen holes on the breadboard. The breadboard of the sensor should be horizontally aligned with the upper quadcopter frame. Now turn around the quadcopter frame and take two M3 lock nuts. These lock nuts should be screwed on the 20mm screws such that the MPU6050 is firmly attached to the upper quadcopter frame. Now install the TNC microcontroller by pushing it on the largest female headers. Make sure the USB connection of the TNC is aligned with a white square drawn on the quadcopter frame. The TNC microcontroller should just slide into the headers. Now repeat the same procedure that you did with the MPU6050 for the barometric sensor. All electronic components should now be firmly fixed to the quadcopter frame. To protect the electronic components in the event of a crash and to allow the installation of a video transmitting system later on, you will also add four standoff spacers around the TNC. These standoff spacers can be easily installed by using four M3 6mm fastening screws inserted from the opposite side of the quadcopter frame. Congratulations! You finished the construction of the upper quadcopter frame. In the final part, you need to connect the upper and lower quadcopter frames. You will do this by using four additional screws and by soldering the ESC power cables to the upper frame. Take the upper quadcopter frame and position it on top of the spacers of the lower quadcopter frame. What you need to do now is to push the power cables of the ESCs from the backside of the upper frame through the holes. Make sure you connect the black cable with the ground hole and the red cable with the VBAT hole. Bend the cable on the upper side of the frame and start soldering it to the foreseen area. The appropriate soldering temperature for this area is around 300 degrees. Soldering the first ESC cable to the frame can be challenging, but it should get easier the more wires make sure the frame cannot move as much. Once all wires are soldered, 
you can switch off your equipment as no further soldering is required. Now use 4M3 6mm fastening screws to fasten the upper frame to the frame spacers of the lower frame. Make sure you do not accidentally crush any cables when fastening the frame. You can now attach the ESC wires using the foreseen holes to the male headers that you soldered on the frame before. Four ESC wires should be connected to each side of the quadcopter. Always make sure that the white signal cable from the ESC is connected with the male pin that has the word signal written below. Do not forget to attach the receiver wire to the upper quadcopter frame as well. Just slide the wire through the hole of ESC4 and connect it to the male headers with the word receiver written below. Now push also the antennas of the receiver through the hole of ESC4. Attach the receiver antennas to each other using some tape. Wrap the tape firmly around the antennas. Now the antennas are too heavy to stay up themselves. An easy and cheap solution for this problem is given by yet another cable tie. Attach the cable tie to the upper quadcopter frame and firmly fasten it. Now slide the cable tie in the hole between the two receiver antennas, which are now bonded together with the tape. The cable tie provides enough support to hold the antennas in the air. This simple solution avoids the antennas getting damaged by the propellers of the quadcopter. Once again, turn around the quadcopter. For easy liftoffs and landings, attach four landing pads to the backside of the lower quadcopter frame. The pads can be installed between the motor and ESC soldering. Turn the quadcopter back around and verify that it sits stable on the ground. To hold the battery and to be able to change it easily, use a battery strap. Insert the battery strap through the holes on the lower quadcopter frame and turn the quadcopter back around. Now slide the battery through the strap on the lower quadcopter deck. You should firmly attach the strap around the battery to avoid it coming loose during flight. When the battery would slide out of the quadcopter deck, you will not able to avoid a quadcopter crash. And that's it. You have made a small do-it-yourself quadcopter yourself. Let's now check the weight of this quadcopter. As you can see, it comes in at 247 grams which is under the regulatory limit of 250 grams or 55 pounds applied by the US, UK and most EU countries. Before connecting the battery, you should always check the correct wiring and soldering of all components. You should verify as well that there are no short circuits between wires and pins, for example, using a multimeter. The startup procedure of the quadcopter will be explained later on, when you coded your first flight controller. In the next video, I will explain the dynamics of the quadcopter. These theoretical principles will be very important for coding the first flight controller. Please subscribe if you like this video series and see you next time.